So every once in a while, the idea of a buzz coil comes up, um, which is a very old technology, but it's actually super effective for these machines. Um, what there is is there's a box. It's a battery-operated box, and there's a relay in there. I'm going to put power to it. I've already put it to where the uh, it's making contact on the engine. You start buzzing there. Well, I'll show you this end. It's a continuous spark. So it's kind of like a, uh, a multiple spark discharge. Uh, long before that was invented by other people, such as uh, MSD, which is multiple spark discharge, um, they were doing that with these buzz coils, which you find on like Model T and other early stuff. So this is a very simple system. You have positive and negative. When we close this, create a contact. This just grounds to the engine. And here we see a contact. It's actually the, uh, there's a, well, it's actually the exhaust valve cam. Or right when it touches, right there, it's on, there it's off. Now it's hanging in the air. So this, of course, has fixed timing. It doesn't change. And the, this connects to the exhaust valve. One thing that's kind of interesting, as this, uh, as this engine fires, the contact is actually here. So when the exhaust valve is open and this thing is freewheeling, it doesn't use any battery power. The battery, you know, the uh, buzz coil is completely disconnected. So it's not continuously firing, even though the engine's spinning. So every time it's not firing, it's on one of the strokes where it doesn't fire, it uh, continuously has the exhaust um, buzz coils off. So those of you that are wondering how a uh, hit and miss motor works, this is actually a very simple one. These have these flyweights here, which centrifugal force forces these out. This adjusts the uh, RPM here. What You put more spring tension on it, it'll run higher. But these go to you know, if you can see like the slides. So the weights will pull this gear away, which pulls this arm and it holds the exhaust valve open. Oh, I missed it. Doesn't really want to stay there. But as long as this holds the exhaust valve open, it freewheels. It has no compression. It doesn't suck any gas in. It doesn't fire. All it does is spin freely with the uh, just the resistance of just the uh, bearings and the piston rings. It's a pretty clever design. So what we have here is the, I guess I should have started at the beginning. We have a vacuum operated valve for the intake. So anytime this exhaust valve is closed, when this is on the intake stroke, just the vacuum of the piston going down will open this and allow air to come in through this valve over here. And it takes fuel from here in a fixed jet It'll fill the cylinder. Oh, I see that it just released. It'll fill the cylinder. I don't know if you can hear that. That noise was the sucking air through the exhaust, uh, through the intake valve. And it comes up on compression. This is hard to do by myself. Makes contact, fires. This opens the exhaust valve, keeps it open, and it freewheels until it slows down to where these bob weights come back in. It disconnects the, the, the stop for the exhaust valve. Then it has vacuum again, sucks to the intake, 
and continues. This way it fires only once every couple seconds. And that's to conserve energy, that conserves battery and conserves fuel. And when this just freewheels, it's not really doing anything. You're losing a, a tiny bit of oil. This has a dripper. You have to do a lot of this yourself. You fill these with oil, that with oil. This is a dripper that's uh, currently off. And, oh, I'm sorry. God damn it, that was on. Oh, there's a bunch of oil in there. Oh no, that is on, okay. And that allows it to start dripping. And that'll drip oil onto the piston. But you actually want to leave that closed uh, when it's not in use. And then actually this is, when you adjust this, it uh, regulates how much oil drips, at what speed, and this is the filler. So, oh yeah, it's empty. I have to refill that. That has to be checked periodically. Uh, what is this here? This is where you put water. This is liquid cooled. So you fill this with water and it gets up to uh, not hot enough to boil unless it's really under like a being worked really hard. But it'll get warm and it'll just kind of steam out, but it keeps the cylinder cool. I'm not sure what else to tell you about this. It's a pretty basic operation. Um, I have a video of it running, but uh, the plan is to hook it up to something and uh, and use it. We were thinking probably hook it up to an ice cream maker so the kids can enjoy it. Should be kind of fun. But yeah, that's the whole thing. Uh, this is what you attach the belt to to run whatever you want. You can run it to it. This isn't a big one, but you can run it to anything that would normally run be run by an electric motor, I guess. You can run a belt to whatever is being driven instead. And this was really common back in the, before electricity was everywhere. So you find these on farms, turn of the century, up into the probably the mid-50s, you would find these out being used in fields for work. So that's the that's what a hit and miss is.